Today is September the 24th, 2019. My name is Tanya Fincham, and I'm in Salisaw, Oklahoma, to talk with Echo Ryder. And this is part of part two of our of our conversation with Echo Garvin Ryder. Get that right, right? And this is part of our Centennial Farm Family Project. So thank you for letting us come again today. Uh, let's pick up a little bit from last time and uh, tell us a little bit about your mother. Born at Mount Ida, Arkansas, in the 18 and Do you know how she came to be in Oklahoma? Don't know. All I know, she's born at Mount Ida. Okay, she in the wagon and worked in the coal mine there. Get a while in Mount Ida. Okay, that's why she came then. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> and and she had four children with your father. She had four children with my father. With your father. And she had two with my stepfather. So a total of six. Well, when your father was killed, how did how did she survive? I mean, what did she do to, to keep the family going? Well, when Papa was alive, they had uh, several acres of land. Okay. And they had about six sharecroppers. And she continued his work the way she could. Okay, so she had some help. Yes, she did. She had some help. Lots of shit proper. Okay. And she stayed on, on the land? We stayed here. Okay. And then when she remarried, did you stay here too? Yes, we stayed here. Okay. And... We stayed here for several years, and we moved to New Mexico for a while, and we were there. That's where I got acquainted with the irrigation system. We had a house in the irrigation canal was right behind the house. My brother and I went out and opened the gate and our water flooded all around our house. Did, did you get Mama in trouble? Got up in the night and saw all the water. <laughs> did you get punished? I don't think so. <laughs> didn't get punished. Mom would say, go get me a switch, and by the time we put her the switch, she'd be over there. All I think is the next time you do this, that's about the end of it. We didn't get much switching. We weren't too mean anyway, were you? Too mischievous? We weren't mean, just mischievous. <laughs> Whatever my brother did, I helped him. Okay. <laughs> And you and you lived at uh, no, you went to Sequoia Primary School. You said you had said primary for your early grades. You went to Sequoia, Sequoia School and then later nicknamed it Middle Ridge. Do you know why? I don't know except the problem. My step grandfather was a miller and he was kind of prominent. Lots of bellers. Well, that may be why. Yeah. That's all the reason I know. <laughs> and how long were they married, your your stepdad and your mother? Well, about 10 years. Okay. They, they didn't get along too well. 
Well, she managed fine without him, didn't she? Yeah. Yeah. He survived. I said, there wasn't any program for me to call in. He survived or whatnot. Yeah, do you remember much about the Depression? Yes. Everybody was in the Depression. I said, we was poor, but we didn't realize we were poor because everybody else was. We just provided what we needed to provide. All the farming, we called it farming and ranching. Everything we needed had good food, shelter, beds, every kind of all we needed. We had an entertainment, we had a lot of dances. Went to dances and things. Every, in people's houses. Just make room for the, and a lot of musicians was in the community, like instruments and everything. And Mama could always do a back step. I never did learn it, and I've never seen anybody else do it. But she could do it back, so back step. It's you going backwards? Oof, that, yeah. With that? Hmm. I don't know. I've tried it, but I couldn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like to dance. And what's your favorite type of dance? I guess my favorite would be, oh, what's it called? Two step. Okay. Yeah. And we used to do the jitterbug. You ever hear the jitterbug? I've heard of it. I don't think I could do it. <laughs> and and that little bit of everything in the jitterbug. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you wiggle a lot. Yeah, you, you really wiggle. <laughs> <laughs> well, and then, then you stayed in school, finished high school. And at that point, what was your what was your plan when you graduated from high school? What were you thinking you would do? Well, I had a, several teachers in the family, so I decided to be a teacher. I first was going to go to medical education, but after I was in college. And so what you had to go through, I don't think I was going to take it at me. <laughs> I was, was in the medical department at Northeastern State College, they called it then. They showed this dog they op operated on. his heartbeat and put it up on And I just, I couldn't stand that. And then one time, in the class, pre-med, there were six boys and I was the only girl. So, they was going to test their urine. Supposed to bring a bottle of urine. <laughs> well, I, I was too embarrassed to. But anyway, the, our professor, he required it, so I had to go pee and oh, do it anyway. <laughs> so I didn't accept too good. So you switched your major. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But during that time, my family, Mama and I had moved to Tahoe and rented a house up there at Tahoe. We, we lived in it for, I guess, a year or two, best I remember. We went to school from there. So your mother and your sisters went with you? Yes. Hmm. Before you go too far off of college, I want you to ask her about Fluffo. Fluff, Fluffo? Fluffo. Oh, <laughs> Fluffo was a big old large stand. We used to get the 
Lord, and they go tanned, but it was cat. And we had to dissect and see all the parts of the lungs and everything about that cat. So we had to get it out every day. We knew it ever, not every day. We had about three, three days a week. We had our classes. And we'd get out and pick the parts of the fluff away, the lungs and every part about it, you know. Then put it back in that formaldehyde to preserve it. That's why I call it, I call it fluffo. <laughs> and that fluffo is our cat. <laughs> did every student have their own? Or did you share? No. We didn't share. Once in a while we shared different things. But uh, not on fluffo. Fluffo. What's yours? So you'd had quite a few classes in the medical field. Yes, yes. Before you switched. Yes. Hmm. They didn't encourage you to go into nursing instead of doctor being a doctor? No. no. I saw I couldn't take it that way. <laughs> I've been a medical doctor, you know. Mm -hmm. But you have to do all that. You have to do all that, yes. All the parts and whatnot, the bone. So about when did you graduate from from college? Well, I graduated in really Four to six. Okay. And then I went back and got a bachelor's in music and school school in the summertime after we were working in other summer sessions. Mm -hmm. I got my bachelor's. Okay. And then I got my master's. It was two different certificates. That's why I ran the attitude and graduated in 69, I think. Okay. All of that education, you could have been a doctor. Yeah. Put in the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, at, like in 1938, 39, before the war was going, you would have been 18, 19 years old. I graduated when I was 17. When you were 17, okay. <laughs> and then you got your first piece of property when you were about 18? When your mother deeded, deeded your 40 acres or whatever to you? No, oh, it was after. Was it? Right before Roosevelt was in, when they had the homestead exemption. Okay. Law. Okay. And they were just children. So we didn't have to have this homestead extended. Yeah. Okay. We wouldn't have to pay such high taxes. And so she divided the land between the four of you? You and your three? three. Okay. Do you know how she decided which piece you would get? No. no. You didn't get to choose? I know when my father was living 40 acres. This was after allotments and whatnot. Then 40 acres, he tried to do a new car for it. On 40 acres. Uh, he got a good deal, didn't he? <laughs> you, and you still have the land? My sister does. This sister, okay. Jason does. I do. Jason has. Still in the family. It's all still in the family. 
And 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 in nineteen in the when the war was going on, they came and recruited you to go. Yes, I was teaching school at, at the Rushy, and the recruiter came there, and I went to Wichita, Lord Aircraft, Wichita, Kansas. There's where I painted the stars on the planes. I painted the gliders. But when I first got there, they had this just canvas like, but the, what they call dope, I could pick it up off. Well, I was allergic to that. So they took me from there and put me where the, took me from that department and put me where the, painted stars on the wings and the planes and the gliders at Boyd Aircraft in Wichita. Well, where did you live while you were there? While I was there, I had a little bit of room in the house. Okay. While I was in Wichita. With other women? Yes, they were more than half. And how would you get back and forth to work? Well, we usually ride with somebody. Sometimes it's close enough to walk. Okay. And you had the, what they call a blue moon dancing place called the blue moon. We were there in a good while. So you had a little fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Were, were there mostly women working where you were? Mostly women? Yes, yes. Mostly women. So when you went dancing, were there men available? Oh, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. We had some friends while we were up there. We all go out mostly. And how long were you there? And how long did you work there? Oh, about a year, six months, and then uh, my brothers and gone to work in defense in California, so I went out to Oakland, California, and worked in the shipyards there. It more dried up. I lived on the 14th, East 14th Street for a while. Hmm. Then I bought a place in the housing condition on 98th Street to St. Dale. It's all many different highways, but anyway, we could see that uh, neighbor base in Alameda. And there was a few fire, but not fire on war zone, but when the airplane was up in the sky, we could see that from where we lived. And, and who lived with you there? A mother and sister. Okay, so you weren't by yourself? No, my brother lived with his son. He and his wife lived with his son. It was a little house. Was it hard for a female to get alone to buy the house? No. no? Didn't take me long. <laughs> <laughs> I've been several years. How just like you know, the new housing condition. Okay. Did they call you Okies? Well, yes, they called us Okies, but I understand people from Texas and Kansas is all called Okies for some reason mm -hmm. when they weren't really from Oklahoma. But it's mostly called Okies. <laughs> I guess that's a nickname they gave us. And when they did, I usually called them California prune pickers. <laughs> I said, hey, you, 
nose over a limb, feet with two hands. People lived on different spots, but not, not all the houses. You weren't worried about crops and that sort of thing while you were out there? Oh, no. 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 Some of the people were back here. And some of the people all went to the defense plants or to the war. Everybody did something. During the time, I said, some went to the defense plant, some went to the military, and some grew victory gardens, what they could do. And uh, those that couldn't go, grew victory garden. And I said, everything was rationed. Did I tell you this before? Mm -hmm. Everything was rationed. Okay. And here some of our people sent us food, what we call, not food steps like today, but for food, to get food. And I said, that's the first time I ever ate peanut butter and banana sandwich. I said, I'll try one of those. And it was real good, real good. Do you still have them today? Once in a while. Once in a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah, once in a while. But we usually had enough because the family back here was, had your own, grew your own, you know. Mm -hmm. And they would send us extra ones that they had. Gasoline was rationed, tarp, everything was rationed. Even material for clothes? I know shoes were rationed. Shoes, okay. Yeah, that would. So when, when you came back, did you move into where we are today or close by where we are today? Close by. Close by. We had a house right up there. Yeah, right down here. Okay. And you went back to school teaching? Went back to school teaching. Mm -hmm. Going back to college. Would go in the summers and okay. go teaching. Okay, and then and then you got married. Yeah. I know I would get my unemployment. And he saw my credentials and said, well, you can teach school. I said, you can't teach school if there's no vacancies. <laughs> then I got married. And the thing about when I got married, we had, when we was about 17, 18, we had had a blind date, I guess you'd call it. He had a friend and I had a friend. So we met. We went dancing up to Silver somewhere. What that place is. They served hamburgers and drinks and whatnot, you know. And uh, he was in the Civil's Conservation Corps, CCC. CCC, yeah. okay. And he went back his way, and I went back to what I was doing. And uh, we didn't communicate anymore. So after we married, 10 years later, <laughs> I asked him, I said, how come we never didn't get together? He said, well, you didn't seem very interested. I said, I don't think you did either. You didn't look me up. <laughs> <laughs> so. We've been married for 63 years. It was meant to be then. One. Yeah, yeah. And you all bought more property? You added to your property as you, longer you were married? You got S more land? Some. Some. And that's what we had more. Okay. And then you 
got some from your dad's parents. Oh, maybe I read that wrong. Well, I don't remember, so. Well, as I said, when Roosevelt got in, we had the homestead exemption. Okay. And we divided it up to them. Mm -hmm. What about mineral rights? Well, the mineral rights Mama kept them and they were divided among the children. Okay, good. Had they had they found oil on the property? Not seeing. Not then. But they did. They found it's digging for oil. But they struck gas and they called it a poisonous gas. Hmm. And they dug a gas well right over here. Not our property, but our neighbor's property. And they're going on our property over here. Well, that one over there, they had to call the uh, health department in because it was poisonous. It was up the rip south of the street and everything. So they had to shut it off. It was blowing big, they struck down. Down in ours, same company, they stuck the same thing on it as salt water, and but it was poisonous too, so they sh closed it off. Hmm. So then now you know not to dig. <laughs> Not to try again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We had it these for a long time. Not anymore. Okay, and then when did you decide on the name for the ranch? How did that come about? Well, my husband and Tom Ryder G. G. R. G. It. it could have been the Echo Ranch. <laughs> yeah, we we raised cattle, horses, and we bred horses, raised horses, and raised the quarter horses. Well, I, I, with I'm just about the name though. Did you and Stephen discuss have a discussion of options, or is it just going to be that from the from the start, the TRJ. I don't really recall. Okay. May have just been an easy decision. Yeah, well, it made it pretty brand. <laughs> it does, it, it does. I noticed that it does. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You, no. can, you can tell about designing that brand because they, the original one she put in that she drew or they drew was a TR. Tell the story about the, the brand. Brand, the original one was kicked out and they sent it back. Oh, yeah. And then you added the yeah. T and the J combined together. Tell, tell her that story. I don't remember that story, Jason. On registering the brand. Oh. When you drew it out. I know. Okay. I don't remember. I'm sure we discussed it. Well, when you designed the brand, though, he was saying the first one didn't didn't pass because it was probably yeah. already taken. I was probably it. taken. Yeah, they have. I know. Uh, it was a three men. We had a, we had a horse named Black Mountain, and they added the 
four horse associates she had the names called the Black Mountain Mist to the Crokey Black Charlie Black. Called him Black Mountain Mist. So and we got to, we got checks on him before he went away after we sold him. Oh, we got checks from him because we we bred the horse. So that was some extra income for the for the ranch. Oh yeah. 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 I know when he was little, he had the colic. And Jimmy had some medicine here for all that purpose and whatnot. So he gave him he was kind of painkiller or something anyway. Well, they gave him a little, little pole, this medicine. Well, he just wobbled it all over the water, falling down and everything. And I said, oh, Jimmy, you killed him. <laughs> but he got, well, my husband said, this medicine is cured to call it called a rag doll. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where he got that expression. <laughs> Mountain, Black Mountain Mist. Yes, yeah. It sounds like a pretty horse. Oh, he was beautiful. He was black. Black and jack. Did you ride him? Oh, no. No? I was in a ride a bar, so. But right, race horses, I didn't ride. Okay. And sad horse. I was a corn horse, sad horse. Ever have a Tennessee walker? No. No. But one horse we had, he just knew when he was in a prey. Oh, he's still high and wide. <laughs> <laughs> They're pretty to watch, aren't they? Yes, they are. Mm -hmm. Yep. Somebody famous borrowed one of your horses and they rode it in a parade. Marty. What was it? Marty. He borrowed. He rode the Jimmy's horses in the parade. Gabby Hayes. I rode with him in the parade in the wagon. Outside. And one of the movie actors from Jimmy's Horse and Prey. Marty, what was his last name? Hell. Oh. Marty Hell. Yeah. Only Monty I can think of is Monty Hall from that game show. <laughs> so I don't know. Yeah. Monty Hell. I'll have to look him up. I'm pretty sure that was his name. Okay. I have pictures of him, but I don't know where the pictures are right now. <laughs> so the parade would have been in Salisaw? Yes, that would have been in Salisaw. Then sometime before our rodeo parade, we'd go to different towns mm -hmm. and ride in the parades and advertise our Quill County. So you and Jimmy would ride? Yes. Yeah. That would have been fun. Yeah. Yeah. And did you two go dancing? Yeah. Yeah. He didn't like to dance as too much as I did. <laughs> Teach him the two step? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. We had, and you probably made it for our own kind of. <laughs> The TRJ dance, huh? Yeah, the TRJ. So if we're going to bring us forward to today, the the property now is in a trust? Yes. Okay. So it'll stay in the family quite a bit longer. hope so. <laughs> when we stood up, 
Papa and Mama's friend was a big four. I like the number four yeah. or a big, just a number four. Number four. Mm -hmm. So today, do you get a say on what goes on on the property? I'll say, but they don't mind me. <laughs> <laughs> they don't mind me all the time. Uh, sometimes. what they want to, I don't have to sleep. So Jason's in charge. Yes. Most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> Most of the time. Michael helps him sometimes. That's okay. In charge. I call Michael my godsend. He called him Chief Sparkle Eyes. <laughs> Chief Sparkle Eyes. Yeah. <laughs> he yeah. keeps you busy? Well, he'll keep you on your toes. <laughs> <laughs> so with with the property in a trust, uh, is there, I don't know how many acres do you have, roughly? About, was it 500? No, it's more than that. 500? How much, Jason? More There's than that. 540 total, but it's not all owned. Okay. Some of it's leased. Okay. And I was reading that you, you bought some property yourself back in the 1930s for like $10 or something? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was about 20 acres for. I believe twenty dollars, maybe or ten. I can't remember. That was a really steal, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Was that twenty dollars hard to come by, though? I guess so. I didn't ever have much money. <laughs> I was thinking you're probably teaching. Would you have been teaching at that time? Yes. So you'd have a little bit of money. Yeah. And it wasn't any problem for a woman to buy property? No. If you got the money, show me the money, huh? And it's yeah. yours. Okay. Had you planned on getting married? Like when you were in California, were you thinking you might you might get married or No, I didn't think anything about it. Didn't think it if it happened, it happened. I Put out on dates, but that doesn't. Okay. She, she met a couple. We work six days a week. Didn't that? Yeah. Eight, eight hours a day? Yeah, sometimes overtime. Overtime. Didn't have time for <laughs> much fun then. Not too much. <laughs> and did your mother work out there too, or just live with you? She, no, she didn't work. She just stayed with you? My sister Jean worked. Just worked. I mean, she worked part, part of the time my brother lived and his family lived with us. Oh. Yeah, the house full. Yeah, yeah, it was full. And did you all come back at the same time? No. no. Me and my mother came back and she stayed out there a while. Okay. But she eventually came back too? Yeah. What was it about this area that, that drew you back? This is just home. Just home. I liked California very much, but this was just home. All the people still lived here. There's lots of cousins and kid folks right here. A lot of them stayed out there too. A lot came back. Well, you did your part to help with the war effort by going out and painting. Yeah, yeah. 
in my heart. <laughs> you've had a you've had a very interesting life. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I said everybody, everybody helped out there in the world. Mm -hmm. Precious to survivors. Well, did you have a garden out there? Did you have enough room for a garden? No, no. No, we didn't have a lot. The lots weren't very big. Okay. I thought your mother might have snuck in a tomato plant. <laughs> no, no. Not that I at all. There's fern, a few potted ferns on the north side of the house. I know I put in some ferns. Okay. You can't eat those, though. You can't eat those. No, no. <laughs> no. Well, do you have a, a highlight, a, a favorite memory? Of my life. Mm -hmm. Any time period, whatever. I have a lot of them. Too many to choose from. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's my question. Do you guys have anything? Anything you want to ask? I, I would like to go back a little bit to the house that she bought in California. Okay. I would like her to tell you who she financed it for, how much she paid down, how much she paid a month. And then when she moved back here, of course, she sold it. And she built the same house here, and that's the house that we're sitting in. Same floor can, plan. Can you, can you tell that story, Echo? Bought a, bought a house in the housing department for $150. And we paid $50 a month. So $150 down and $50 a month? Yes. $150 down and $50 a month. And when my brother lived there, he paid $25. My sister paid $25. And yeah. you, you charged them rent, basically? Yeah. Not mama. No. And who did you make that payment to? Who who had you who who were you paying? The bank or oh, yeah. Uh, What's the name of the bank? Wait just a minute. Was it American? Bank of America? Bank of America. Bank of America. And it was just a few blocks away from where we lived. It was on 14th Street, the Bank of America. It was there. Did you have a down, no, you said 150 down payments. You didn't have collateral. Just give them $150 and sign a few papers? Yes, that's what we did. So how much was the house total? What was the price of the house? I don't really know. I don't remember that. Well, when you sold it, do you remember if you broke even or made a profit? No. I, I had been paying mostly on the interest on the house. Okay. I didn't sell it. I just let them have it back. Okay. And then you came here and built a house? Yeah, the first house we built here. Kind of was a replica of that. But it was just a small house. Too big to have that. But it's the house that we're sitting in right now. This house? Yeah. It was a replica of the one you had in California. It was in. But we've added it over here yeah. and redone. You got used to the layout out there yeah. and locked it. Locked it. So two bedrooms, bath, kitchen. Dining, dining, little dining kitchen. And a dining, and a living room. Yeah, and a garage. And a garage. And a garage. 
Did you have a car out there? No, I no, didn't have a car. I just drove it. A train or rode with somebody. I had a car pool. Or walked. <laughs> on the wall. Yeah. Yeah. I walked sometimes when I walked over time from 14th Street to 98, over down 98th Street to my home. Well, did you have to borrow money to build the house here? Well, I had a little money. You had saved up some? Okay. Had so. You were doing really well for a single woman, weren't you? Managing, anyway. I guess so. Everybody yeah. thinks so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? Let's let's talk a little bit more about Ma Miller. You told that she was born in Mount Ida, which is near Hot Springs, Arkansas. She was born in August of 1887, I believe. Does that sound right? Right. 1887? Yeah. And the Mount Ida area was kind of a stopping point between Georgia and here? Yeah. But they stayed there a while? They stayed there a while. Okay. And then the Amos family continued on to Hanson? Continued to Hanson in another place. And they nicknamed it Georgia Town. When they all came and settled, because you know one friend from another knew each other back in Georgia. And then I said, the Georgians chased the Indians out, and then their people came here. Married the Indians. <laughs> Mom and Papa, when they would got to get married. But anyway, Papa was the Indian. Mama was from Georgia. But her family was originally from Hot Frank, but anyway, the original family was in Georgia. And they were just going to, I don't know why they were going to Fort Smith to get married, but anyway, he told Grandpa Amos, said, Mr. Amos, I'll address my bride. He said, but there was something on it. He said, Mr. Amos, I'm addressing my bride. I guess that's all the way he asked for. <laughs> so they went to. Or go to go to Fort Smith, and evidently there was a, at that time it was for the river. He said, "Well, if this buggy floats off, so get on to the hold on to the horse's tail and go across." <laughs> and you know, at one time, people crossed the Arkansas Railroad, used to railroad for a highway, hmm. drove cattle across it. Over there at one time it was a Acme brick manufactory years ago at the other end over in Arkansas. Now what did it, how they did it I do not know that part, but they were drove the cattle across the railroad. Hmm. We used the railroad for it. get across. And they one place, it must have been dry weather, they pulled into the river along there. Because Grandpa Garvin drove cattle over in the Canberks across into Arkansas. Hmm. And evidently they didn't feed them much hay, they fed cotton seed. Mm. What's the gin now? Cotton, you know, just plain old cotton seed. 
scattered on the ground. Hmm. I don't know the details about that. <laughs> That's what I've been told. Yeah. I don't know if it's in history that it's true. Well, you couldn't cross the Arkansas today without a a bridge or something. Oh, no, no. It's really full today. Did you see that now that a flood had that off it? Mm -mm. It's all the way up to the road. <laughs> Well, I'm not sure where Hanson, Oklahoma is. Three miles south. So pretty close to where we are. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's, uh, it's basically the other side of Miller Ridge. <laughs> but they didn't go far. So you get to Hanson from here. The way I go. Go down. To this course, right back here. You go west. Is it two mile? Are, are you going Central High Road or are you going the other way? Well, get the Hanson. I think you just. I go one mile. No, I don't want to go Central High Road. Go one mile west. Go one mile west. Go down here. Go one mile west. Go due south. About three miles. About three miles. There's no town there now, but anyway, that's the Hanson community. And that's where they call it Georgia Town. And it used to be a nice little town there. Hanson at one point was larger than Salisaw. Wow. Oh, yeah. It was larger than Salisbury. It was before Salisbury. And uh, they had a shipping, kind of shipping yards there. They had a store. It, Did the railroad go through it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Across the railroad there. And, and, and you shipped from the railroad there. So if they had a cattle drive or if they had crops to leave, you would take it to Hanson and they would load it on the the train cars. Yeah. It was a shipping port out of there. And well, most of it burned down. That's where they lost the town. So that was my next question. What, what made them shift to Salisaw? A fire? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, well, where are your parents buried? Papa and Mama buried it. It could be called Hanson's Fleetwood Cemetery. Is it go in the vicinity of Hanson? Two miles west and yeah. go south. You'd see a sign Fleetwood Cemetery. Before you get to 64 Highway, you know where 64 mm -hmm. Highway is. Mm -hmm. It's about a mile back this way. It's off of the main road, but not very far off. That's pretty good. Okay. And we, I saw on somewhere where, you, where you're, where's, where's Jimmy buried? He's buried in Hagen. Hagen here. And you're the queen of the TRJ? Yeah. That's what we all do. Queen of the TRJ. TRJ. It seems about right, doesn't it, though? Yeah. Yeah. I call him my Cherokee warrior. <laughs> he used to say, when we, were young, when we were younger, we were mad. He said, 129 pounds of rolling stone. <laughs> 129 pounds of what? Rolling stone with H-E-L-L. <laughs> His favorite sandbag sometimes. But you never got mad, did you? <laughs> no, we didn't argue. Okay. But 
would pout when they should go in. <laughs> so I had to represent my stepfather and my mama. So we never argued. They did enough for all of us. Did they stay married or did they get divorced? They got divorced. They'd be in and out with each other, you know. Mm -hmm. Come and go. Got divorced. But not for quite a while. Was he hard on, on you as as a stepchild? No, no, no. He never, he was never abusive for really. But he, I was, I was just afraid of him for some reason. He loud. Mm. He, I remember one time he, we saw playing on a, one of our wagons or something. He, I guess he's no telling what we do to all the kid folks was to feast and whatnot. Lots of kids and we were playing and holding off of that wagon and he kept quarreling on us, but he never did whip or shoot like that. He was, I was just afraid of him. Afraid of my, my whip or <laughs> No, he never was abusive to us. Well, who did the discipline at that time? Your mom or him? If you got into trouble, my mama. Did she? As I said, yeah. Get the switch. Get the switch. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. we hardly ever got much punishment physically. I had to get the switch a couple of times myself, so I know what that's like. Yeah, it's not fun. It's just over a man fell before you she got it. Fix it old arm with a long tall and skin all the leaves off of it. <laughs> I take a long time to find that switch. Yep. But we children, we came in from school, we had chores to do. If you showed it up, we had school clothes. We pulled them off and put on what we call them work clothes, you know. We saved them school clothes so they'd look nice as they could. And I remember one time my brother is older than me. He had a shimmery shirt. That was his way over to school. Well, somehow he got it. In the pocket part, and he said, "Damn, Mama, I didn't know I just have one shirt to wear at school." <laughs> he was proud, but anyway. What about shoes at that age? Oh yeah, that's the shoes at that age. We used to get a, a pair of shoes if we summer shoes. Would buy for winter. Would buy what they call nine shine. We paint them black if they lasted through the summer. And uh, when the other shoes would buy a pair of new shoes, would buy extra sole that you could glue on. So they let let something they had sole that you could glue on to the other. Hmm. Make that last longer. So we found ways to survive and look look nice, you know. Mama was a real good seamstress. So was my sister. She's older than me. Oh, I had to find a sister that was just older. She's ten years older than I am. And what was her name? Juanita. Juanita. Mama said it bit little John. Good part. Good part Spanish. Hmm. <laughs> Didn't know that, did you? Got that ancestry deal. Hmm. 
short things. Yeah, there you go. I always said I was Duke's mixture. <laughs> so you would have gotten the uh, ox shoes once a year, basically, right before school would start. Yeah. Or before school starting. And would you make your clothes out of flower sacks, feed sacks? Once in a while. Once in a while, and make them out of that material or about nine CCR and stuff like that. Oh, but very many people have nine cents. <laughs> yeah, I wore a flare sack. And hand me downs? Hand me downs from your sister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hand me And did your mother churn butter, make butter? Oh, yeah, we churned it a little churn, churn, churn. We had a separator. Later, we got a cream separator. And a big milk, put your milk up there and turn this crank. And, uh, and just put the cream in one bout milk and the other somehow. And my brother older than me would take turns doing that. So it's your turn we'd have our with whose turn it was. <laughs> Good turns. <laughs> yeah. And what was his name, your brother? Emmett. Emmett. Mm -hmm. So Echo, Emmett, Juanita and Lee. Lee. Yeah. Lee was Juanita and Lee. It was what he was old, Lee, Emmett, Echo. And then two more, Gene. Gene. And Nick Neiman. Nick Neiman died when he was 16 years old. I think he was five. Hmm. He was beautiful. That's his picture over there. And the last one, that's pretty, yeah, over on the end. Handsome fella. Oh, yeah, the prettiest eyes. Black eyes. Did everybody have blue eyes like yours? Yeah. Hmm. So your mother would have, your mother would have had blue eyes. Yes. But your dad probably, with being the Indian Cherokee, with his, what color were his? Well, it's out of the blue, what do you call it? Blue eyed Indian. Okay. Well, they're pretty blue eyes. <laughs> they are. Anything else? Anything else? What we did? You wanted to confirm the racehorse name. Oh, yes. We couldn't figure out what you, you had told us last time what the name of the racehorse was that won. It sounded like no. It, it's Ghost No Smith. Ghost No Girl. Go Snow Girl. Yeah, and she uh, really named Snow Girl that came up. She was born in January, I'm thinking. Came a big snowstorm, and Jimmy had square bales of hay on her and boxed her in, in, in a big barn, put some bales of hay around her. She was born in that. We call her Go Snow Girl. She was out of a Go Man Go <laughs> day. And that's Go Snow Girl. And what color was she? She was a, a what to call it, sorrel. Okay, a pretty mm -hmm. light brownish. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, and she won a race or two? She won several. She won several. Yeah. She held the track record at Blue Ribbon Downs for a long time, many years. Yeah. Wow. Her speed index. Yeah. So you would have had a, a racetrack somewhere on the property to, to teach them to, to run? No. No, no. No. I always used, well, later years used Blue Ribbon Downs, but there was 
brush tracks before. She can tell you about the brush tracks. Brush tracks? That's your nice track. You haul you wherever track was. It might be different places. Some of them had. And before Blue River Dam, they had a brush track out there and they had them still well somewhere over in the eastern Ar uh, western Arkansas. You haul your horses, you walk them around and get somebody to match, match you for so many dollars, you know, if you can do that one. And uh, then winter take all, you know, for the one race. And that's the way they what they call it, brush track. You had to get your own bets. Yeah. Basically, huh? Yeah. I know one time uh, before it was official, we ribbon down the head that was called the brush trap. And we had a horse named Skyboat Bar. We didn't do mention blockage of Skyboat. He was called Skyboat Bar. And we messed him into this horse in it. Guy and his horse was named Pretty Boy. So we marched and met from Skyboat Bar. He could really get out of the race track fast. Couldn't run so very fast all the way down. But from about 220 yards, he could outrun most of them. So this man and by and he had a pretty boy. So we matched him. Well, we won. We just won forty dollars. <laughs> but anyway, the next Sunday or two, we went back out there. I bought me during the meantime. I bought me a pretty pantsuit and. Uh, we had matched and matched the race again. So we won. And he took a little horse out to his trailer. And said, Usually cool them out, you know, walk them after they run them. He said, Get in there, you can't run anyway. And during the meantime, he, this fella from mine told me, he said, You have on a pretty pantsuit. I said, Well, you paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we had a, made a lot of good friends and acquaintances during the horse racing breeding. Well, how would you practice the horse, though? Did you have some place on here that you would practice them yeah, on the on the property? Oh, we had a, out here. Jimmy told him, but did it later on when. Hard, hard, had to with harder trainers. Okay. And get them on a rope and have them go around, you know, hold the rope. And then we had a walker, what they call a horse walker, you know what that is. Mm -hmm. It's like a merry go around. Okay. And they hooked the horses on it. And they're tied to this big. Wheel on okay. Well, when, when, how did they learn to race? You just take them once and go? Oh, they take them back. Practice they had gates, you know, where the horses go out. Uh -huh. They take them out there on the track and train them. And train them, okay. Like a regular race track. It's a regular old brush track. You just tra train them. Didn't have any gauge or anything. At least we didn't. About how often would you do that? Oh, about three times a week. Oh, okay. Yeah. Keep, keep them in shape. Yeah. You did have an interesting life. Yeah, it wasn't no. I never got bored. <laughs> we didn't get bored. I'm thinking we didn't have to dust you off too much either. You were constantly busy. Yeah. 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 Anything else you want to add? Anything else you can remember you want to share with us? 
I just want to say I had a wonderful life. Wonderful. What I have because of the goodness of the Lord, the grace of God, my love of the friends. Bad, wonderful, wonderful family. Mm -hmm. and I'm so thankful for it. I tell them all, be sweet, small, pretty, and leave a little happiness wherever you go. Okay. Well, I know you definitely did that. Yeah. I hope so. <laughs> and we we're going to wish you an early happy birthday, okay? Okay. All Thank right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you for talking with us again. Thank you.